win sweet prizes. Backed up I-40 across the area. And again, this is the system that's now going to be targeting the Rockies. So uh, we give you a virtual view of Denver with the snow beginning to come down. That'll reduce visibility. Could lead to some travel issues, of course, if you are going to be out and about on the road. So we bring up the map. We'll give you the timing. Break it down as we move through the remainder of today and into tonight. But we start with what happened in Flagstaff. Tuesday snow, 10.6 inches. Wednesday snow, 13.1 inches. Yesterday, 12.4. So by the end of Thursday, you had three feet plus on the ground. And that puts our total for the 2023-24 season at 72.9 inches, so just under 73 inches of snow. This is the first time since the 1880s that we've had three consecutive days of double digit snowfall in the Flagstaff area. Now we see what we've got in Denver. The snow moves in by the later hours of today, so I think early part of the late day commute is good. I think it's going to be the later part, the 6, the 7, the 8 o'clock, where we really begin to see that snow fill in in earnest. It will continue during the overnight hours into Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, still some snow showers lingering, especially. I think to the south and east of town that'll wrap up into Sunday morning. Still maybe a few flurries left at that point, but the steadiest, heaviest stuff will be done by then. Good news for Denver is you're not looking at Flagstaff kind of snow. We're not seeing double digit snow, even just one day of it. More of that two to three inch snowfall accumulation. So Littleton, uh, Centennial down to Castle Rock, probably right around two inches, and that would be the same in the Denver Metro. We look at Amarillo and Lubbock and Childress. I think these areas are probably also in that one to two inch range. Could see a higher uh, little bullseye off to the south and east of Amarillo. That's where we could see some areas getting into that five, six inch range. So maybe a localized hot spot, but for a lot of the areas, I think one to three inches, Dr. Nab will keep this pretty manageable. And and how does this play into what happens on sitting inside, maybe spending some time in the grocery store? There's nothing more fun than this weekend going to the grocery store and just figuring out what you want. This is like the one time of year that I let myself have like those um, the nacho cheesier uh, chips because I can't be trusted around them. I will eat a whole bag in one setting. So this is the weekend I get them. They can't be in my house. It's just not safe for me. Increasing moisture ahead of the cold front. This is tomorrow. So we're going to see a lot of wet weather all across the southeast, the Gulf Coast as well. We've got a strong subtropical jet stream that'll keep the moisture flow in place. That'll also keep things a little spicy in the way of stronger storms. So as the upper winds steer our disturbances north, that'll increase the lift. More lift means more cloud cover, more rain shower activity. So that's what we'll see for the upcoming weekend. Already seeing that. I told you about Middle Tennessee, Murfreesboro getting in on some of the showers right now. It is Tennessee seeing most of the activity at this point, but we've got some back into parts of Mississippi, a little bit of Arkansas as well. And today, these are areas that could see some severe storms. So southern Indiana and Illinois, all the way back into east Texas or northeast Texas would be the area that I would be watching for at least a, an isolated stronger storm. Here's the timing as we finish off the afternoon. Again, that's when things get going. Little Rock could be a spot to watch for the mid-evening hours. And then again, things really get going into our Saturday. Could be a stormy start to your Saturday in Nashville. And we'll just keep it going through the afternoon. Dr. Knapp? Caden, we get ready for another opportunity from sn for snow. One well to the north, the next system coming in from the south. Yeah, so Caden's kind of been an outlier. Uh, yeah. The surface low forming pretty far north and west and going north of the Great Lakes. So that's not going to bring snow to right. the northeast. But the nope. pattern will change. And this next trough that's in the west here, this is going to be digging pretty far to the south. So as Caden departs here, Look at what this trough does. Look how far yeah. south that's going. I was going to say, you don't need a meteorology degree to see the depth of that trough. I mean, that thing sticks out. Yeah, and when and the colors of the surface uh, circulation that starts down yeah. in Texas and Louisiana. So that has a that's a candidate to affect the Northeast. Right, and the Northeast, they're like. Please, because <laughs> you know they finally got that one inch snow that they've been waiting for twice in one week, but. They're still waiting for the big one. Yeah, and it's been you know, like a couple weeks now mm -hmm. where you've gone back to, oh, here we go, well, winter right. without a winter. Right. But this starting out so far south, and then the, the timing of the yeah. upper level systems makes it a little bit uncertain, but the models are getting into better agreement on something that passes just offshore near that benchmark, but it's a pretty fast mover. But there should be enough of, of a snow event that you'll notice that in addition to the wind. Yeah, because I think people start to look at, you know, the, the onset, it's coming in. In, uh, from the interior, a lot of rain, but then it does move offshore. We switch that over to snow. Yeah, so that's why the models have had trouble over the last few days on deciding mm -hmm. uh, where the rain snow line is going to fall. But now that we're close enough into it and the models are in a better agreement, I think uh, it's safe to say that the 
Chances of snow from Philadelphia northward are increasing with the track going pretty close to that benchmark. Yeah, and that would be exciting. We know the benchmark is the, the spot to optimize the snow for those uh, northeast cities. The population spots may be interior that does a little bit better, but hey, New York, Boston certainly in play. Yeah, and now both the models yeah. have that snow line in about the same spot. So and it has trended a little bit farther south compared to last night. Mm -hmm. So the chances are increased, but Baltimore, D.C., maybe not so much now. Yeah, so somebody gets left out. Everybody can't always come to the party, right? But at least but Philly gets, looks like Philly might get to play this time. Get some, right? We got much more ahead on Weather Underground. The threat of severe storms increasing this weekend. We'll let you know where and when. Steam. They do have natural turf, though. Yeah. They roll in and out. Yeah, the field comes in on a big tray in and out of the stadium. Isn't that cool? I Super love fancy. That. I want to watch that. That's yeah. cool. So, and they and they got to make everything good for Usher. You can't have you can't have the roof open. You can't have sun glare when he's trying to dance like that. He can't fall. Well, he can't mess the field up. Yeah. That too. He, he I mean, we got a stage on yeah, top they gotta of put the stage. Yeah, because what's going to be Usher's thing? Like we talked about Lady Gaga jumping in, we nailed that. Rihanna was on platforms. Like, what's going to be Usher's thing? You don't know? No? I, we'll figure it out. I have no idea. He's going to surprise us. You think he's going to have guests? I think he's going to have guests. Oh, they always do. I now. think they Lil John. Yeah. I think ludicrous. Ludicrous for yeah. sure. But the outcome of the game, I think, is largely going to be determined by the weather in the yeah. cities in question. Yeah. Absolutely. So we did our little weather scoreboard. Yeah. Check the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the city. So we're doing some comparisons here between the two cities, San Francisco and then Kansas City. Yeah. Hottest temp, San Francisco or Kansas City, since September 1st, mm, since the beginning of, of the NFL season. Kansas City. I'm going to yeah. say Kansas City. Too. Yeah, I'd say yeah, Kansas maybe, City. That would seem to make Not sense. Not by much. Huh. Ooh, yeah, but you were right. Because right. no, 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 the fall, the Santa Ana season yeah. in September and October. That's great. Uh, that's why he's an expert. Oh, that's Santa why we keep Anna him around. season. Yeah. yeah. Think about that. Who's had the wettest day since I'm the beginning of the, oh. of the NFL season? I would go with San Francisco yeah, with all the weather they've had in there, there, though. Yeah. Uh, it could. Uh, Stop using logic. California you're right. has what? been rocking. Yes, San Francisco. You're right. Oh, but, oh, it's, oh, but it's not by that much. It's kind of like the game. Like, nobody's a clear favorite. It's mm -mm. it's very... It's tight. It's very it's even. tight. All right, so how about the city that's had the most precipitation days, measurable precipitation since the beginning of September? I'm also going San Francisco. Yeah, I'm going to go San Francisco because there was a lot of dryness in the country in the middle of the summer. Well, yeah. this isn't summer, right? This is since September fall. 1st. Yeah, in the fall. Ooh, I'm, I'm still going San Francisco. I'm going to be different. I'm going to go Kansas City. I'm not confident in my answer, but I'm yeah. going Kansas City to be different. I love that for you. I'm just like, let's go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, just, and, and oh, I made it for you. Yes, but he, squ he squeaks yes. by. Boy, this is going to be a close game on Sunday, isn't it? It is. It is. This could go um, into overtime. It <clears throat> may. Uh, when we look at 70 degree or more days, I'm going to go Kansas City for that one. Uh, yeah, ditto. Since September, uh, seven, yeah. 70 degree days, though. Yeah. Boy, that this is tough. I'm still doing it. I'm going I'm, San Francisco. I'm going Kansas City. San Francisco. Right. Bucking the trend. You look different. Oh, wow. Look at you. Boom. Wild guess. It's I mean, you got a 50-50 I mean, shot, right? Yeah, at yeah. this point it is. Uh, <laughs> Especially when you go back to the fall. 90 degree days. Uh, okay. I go Kansas, Kansas City. That one, too. It's hard to get above 90 in San Francisco. Yeah, right. it Kansas happens. City. I mean, Kansas, Kansas, City. City. Kansas City. Yeah. And the answer is? Four to eight. Yeah. yeah. So but I went to a day. San Francisco Giants game back in the day, and it was 90 degrees at night because of Santa Ana. Uh, yeah. That sounds miserable. Thank you. Yeah. you got to turn that jersey into a <laughs> So, Alex, since you're dressed like one of the teams, are you going to be right next to Taylor Swift arguing for the other team to win in the press box next to her? So. 